Hi everyone, Quiveen here from CIT's Blackrock Castle Observatory. Today we're going to be taking a look into the early morning sky to take a look at something that we call an asterism. Now we have mentioned asterisms in previous videos without saying what they really were. So in this video we're going to take a closer look at a couple of the shapes we've mentioned previously. If you're enjoying these videos make sure to hit the red subscribe button and if you want to stay up to date with everything we release including our live streams make sure to hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button to make sure you get all of the most up-to-date uh, notifications. So we're taking a look into the very early morning sky. We're here at about six o'clock in the morning looking into the east. So we're just before the sunrise. You should be able to see in the southeast we have Mars, Saturn and Jupiter. Those three planets will be in the sky for the rest of this month. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about them, we have posted some videos about those planets on YouTube and on Twitter in the past few weeks. But we're looking a little bit higher into the east. And because the sun is after rising, only the brighter stars in the sky are visible, like Vega, Deneb, and Altair. So we can see now, they make a nice triangle in the sky. And if you're just using your eyes, they're pretty much the only bright stars visible, very clearly making a triangle. Now, if I bring up the lines from my constellations, they don't make a triangle at all. They're in three very different constellations. Because this triangle that we call the Summer Triangle, it's not a constellation at all. It's what we call an asterism. Thankfully, Stellarium gives us the tools to show our asterisms. Just in here, in our View tab, in our Star Lore section, we've got our Show Asterism lines. And here we can see a nice big triangle. Now this triangle is really connecting stars in three different constellations and that's because it's not a constellation. Asterisms are famous shapes in the sky that are useful. Sometimes they overlap with constellations but they're not usually the same. I've already mentioned a asterism, the teapot in Sagittarius. If you take a look down here, the asterism of the teapot is just the shape of the teapot, whereas the constellation lines of Sagittarius have these extra lines at the side. So the teapot is an asterism part of a constellation, whereas the summer triangle is an asterism connecting three constellations. Asterisms don't have quite as many rules as constellations, and there's also some overlap. If we take a look into the north, well, there's the shape of Ursa Minor. It's also an asterism called the Little Dipper, but those are the same stars in the constellation of Ursa Minor. So here we have an overlap. The stars in the constellation are the same as the stars in the asterism. Whereas down here, we have the plough and the mini plough, which isn't quite as famous. We've already mentioned that the plough is part of the bigger constellation Ursa Major, but most of us just talk about the plough, which really does make the plough the most famous asterism. It's not a constellation at all, but it's a shape in the sky that many, many people are familiar with. Now the plough, we use it to find north. It's got a nice, reasonable usage. The summer triangle, well, it was used in ancient times to figure out when it was summer, and we are going to take a quick look at how. So we're not quite in summer time yet. It is still very much a spring. So we're going to get rid of the lines here. We'll still be able to keep track of where the summer triangle is. So let's get rid of that. Now at this time of the year, we're coming into summertime. So the summer triangle is just coming up in the morning. I'm going to make the sky just a tiny bit darker, bring us a little bit closer to the middle of the night. And we're going to go forward into summertime. All the way through, here we are in just a couple of months, the sun will be rising quite a bit earlier. Here we are a bit closer to five, summer triangle is still there. And going just a little bit further forward, really getting into the middle of summer here. Perfect. So here we are very close to the middle of summer and there is the summer triangle nice and high at two o'clock in the morning. The summer triangle in the summer will stay with us all night long. So there it is nice and high above the south in the middle of the night. If it was earlier in the evening, we'd see it just coming up over in the east. So we can see that there at about 11 o'clock where 
the sun is still a little bit bright here in Ireland. And if we go all the way forward to morning time, and of course in the summer, morning time's pretty close to four o'clock, well, it's still there. It's there the entire time. If it's summertime, the summer triangle is in the sky the entire night. If the summer triangle isn't up for the entire night, well, it can't be summertime. And this is one of the very useful parts of the sky for telling the time of year. Now, generally in a lot of Europe, the summer triangle wasn't used for telling the time of year. Instead, we used a group of constellations known as the zodiacal constellations. But in ancient Persia and in other Arabic parts of the world, the summer triangle was the group of stars that was regularly used for figuring out the time of year. So you can keep an eye on the summer triangle over the next couple of weeks. As we get closer and closer to summer, the summer triangle will stay with us for more and more of the night. But coming back to today and coming back to this time of the year, here we are on the 10th. <coughs> And you can see that Altair is there, so is Deneb, so is Vega. They're in the sky, the whole triangle at around two o'clock. But if we come earlier than two o'clock, we'll lose that star Altair and we will only have Deneb and Vega in the sky. So at this time of the year, if you're going out looking at the stars, Deneb and Vega will be the ones you can see because it's not summertime. And if you want to get a good view of the summer triangle, well, the hint is in the name. The summer triangle will look its best in the summer. But if you are anxious to see it, if you'd really like to see the summer triangle and you don't want to wait the extra months, you can see the stars in that triangle in wintertime in springtime, you just have to go out at a different time of the night. It won't be there the entire night long. So just quickly bringing up those constellations again, I mentioned in one of our shorter videos that the three constellations in the corners are Cygnus, Lyra and Aquila, but we do have those other little constellations in the center, Vulpecula and Sagitta. And one of the most fantastic things about this section of the sky is actually in the constellation of Cygnus, very close to the center of Cygnus. It's unfortunately not something we can see with our eyes, it is an x-ray source. Up here in the constellation of Cygnus is the first black hole that we ever confirmed was a black hole. Cygnus X1. X for being a black hole, and or X for being an x-ray source, and 1 for being the first one we ever discovered. One of the ways we look for black holes is for looking for strong sources of x-rays, so a strong x-ray source often means a black hole. The very first one we ever confirmed is just up there in the constellation of Cygnus. So I do hope you get a chance to see Cygnus and and Lyra, uh, Deneb and Vega's constellation this evening. And if you are one of those late night people, or if you're an early riser up at six o'clock, you'll be able to see Aquila the Eagle and Altair as well. So I hope you get to see that triangle, even if you have to wait till summer.